Good day, Grade Tents. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the first set of revision, and what we're going to be doing is going through some algebraic expressions. So basically, what I'm doing is revising the stuff you guys should have learned in the first term. If you don't understand or if I'm go you feel that I'm going to quickly through this, remember that this is just a revision lesson to remind you of what you should know and what you should be preparing for in the exams. And you feel free to go back to week one and week two and go through the lessons where I teach this very slowly and very carefully. So this is just revision, okay? So let's go through it. The first one is the distributive law. And what is the distributive law? The distributive law says that we multiply every component in, in the bracket with every other component in another bracket, okay? That sounds very complicated, but you guys know how to do this. So we're going to go through a couple of examples just to make sure you do know and can practice. What I would suggest you do now is you pause the video right now and you can try it for yourself if you think you know what you're doing. If you don't, look at the first example and then pause. Or you can watch all of them and then you can rewind or go back and then rewind and then go back and um, stop the video at this point again and then try them for yourself and then replay to make sure that you got them right. Okay, so let's have a look at this one. Distributive law. What we're saying is that the first binomial <laughs> in this binomial has to be multiplied with each of the values in the second bracket and then the second one has to be multiplied by each of the values in the second bracket. So what do we do? We go x times x which is x squared plus x times, uh, times 3 which is 3x plus 2 times x, which is 2x, plus 2 times 3, which is 6, which becomes x squared plus 5x plus 6. Okay, and after you've multiplied, you always add up the like terms. Okay, now we're going to try one that's slightly more complicated for the simple reason that we've got a second variable here, a y. It doesn't mean a thing really, it's exactly the same and you'll see why. Um, excuse me, pardon the pun. Okay, we are just going to do exactly the same thing. So we're going to go x times x is x squared, right? x times 3y becomes plus 3xy. Then we've got x times 2y, which becomes plus 2xy, plus 2y times 3y becomes 2 times 3 is 6, and y times y is y squared. So that becomes x squared, 3 plus 2 is 5, and they've both got these common factors plus 6y squared. Okay, so you can see if you look very carefully, this is x squared, that's x squared, that's 5x, this is 5xy, and this is 6 and this is 6y squared. So the presence of these y's doesn't really change the sum, okay, that much. All it does is we do exactly the same principle, we just add in those extra y's where we have it to multiply them. Okay, now let's do something a little bit more complicated. We now have a fraction as a second part of our binomials. Okay, so again we're going to take it nice and slowly. We're going to go x times x is x squared plus, and now I'm going to do it much lower. I'm actually going to write these out. So it goes x times by 3 over x plus this one, 2 over x times x plus, and then the last one, 2 over x times 3 over x. Okay, so let's neaten this up. We've still got x squared here. This x is actually x over 1. So they cancel and you've just got a plus 3 plus, again this x is actually x over 1 because anything that is just a whole number is actually divided by 1. So they cancel and you're just left with a 2 plus 3 times 2 is 6 over x times x is x squared. And finally we neaten it up and we go, well, that is x squared plus 3 plus 2 is plus 5 plus 6 over x squared. Okay, last one. 
This time, same thing, we've got a binomial here and a binomial here, but this time this is squared and that's also squared. So we're going to do exactly the same thing here, and we just have to take into consideration the fact that this x is squared and that x is squared. So we've got x squared times x squared, which becomes x to the 4, because when you multiply, you add the indices or the exponents. Then we're going to multiply these two, so it becomes plus 3x squared, right? Then we're going to multiply this and this, okay, which is plus 2x squared, and then we do the last terms, 2 times 3 is 6. So it becomes x4, we add the likes terms, so 3x squared plus 2x squared is 5x squared plus 6. And you can see this has got exactly the same format as this one. Okay, the only difference is that this is x to the 4 and this is x squared, where this is x squared and this is x. And the simple reason is because of these basic exponents here. Okay, so that's a distributive law. I need you to make sure that you know how to do these and go practice. Luckily for you, grade 10, you only need to apply the distributive law to binomials, in other words, brackets that only have two things separated by a plus or a minus. Right, let's carry on. Perfect squares. Okay, so perfect squares basically have a rule. And the rule is this. You've got a plus b squared becomes square the first, which is a squared. Square the last bit, which is b squared. You multiply these two together, so it becomes a plus b, a times b. And then you multiply times that by 2, so it becomes plus 2ab. So that's the rule, okay? But, and then obviously, if this is a minus, then this would become a minus as well. But let me show you, let me prove this to you with the first one. And then, and you'll notice all of these are pluses to make our life a little bit easier. So we don't have to worry about this minus too much at the moment. So we're going to show you that this is true in the first one. And then we're going to practice using the rule and the others. So if you've got x plus 3 squared, that becomes x plus 3 times x plus 3. So then what we're going to do is we're going to apply the distributive law. So we're going to go x times x. x times x is x squared. Then x times 3 is plus 3x. And 3 times x is plus 3x. And 3 times 3 is 9, which becomes x squared. 3x plus 3x is 6x plus 9. Now if we look at that answer and compare it to the rule that we would have done, x squared is x squared, x times 3 is 3x times by 2 is 6x, and 3 squared is 9. So you can see it does actually work. So what actually happened was that some people were very productive and they multiplied out a whole bunch of these using the distributive law and then suddenly realized that you could use this trick if it's a perfect square. So that's how they found it out. So now we are going to apply the trick. Okay, so what do we know? First term, this is a perfect square. Okay, first term squared is x squared. Then whatever the sign is here becomes plus 2x, 2 times 2y times x becomes 2xy, but we have to multiply by 2, so it's 2, 2xy, plus this bit squared, 2y squared. And I'm writing this slowly so you can see what we're doing. So it becomes x squared plus 2 times 2 is 4, 4xy, plus the whole of the squared, 2 squared is 4y squared. Okay, now let's apply this rule to the next question. So what do we have? And again, we've got the first term squared, so it becomes x squared, plus these two multiplied together times by 2, so we've got 2 times x times 2 over x, plus the whole of this term here, squared, so we've got 2 over x, all squared, which becomes x squared plus, now, this actually is over 1. Remember, any whole number is actually implicit. It means that it's divided by 1. So these cancel. And what do we have? We've got 2 times 2, which is 4. Plus, and then we square the whole of this. 2 squared is 4 over x squared. Okay, not too bad, eh? 
Right, the final example in perfect squares. Okay, again, we're going to take it very slowly. You've got x squared, all squared, plus 2 times 4 times x squared, see, plus 4 squared. Now, grade 10s, when you get good at this, you don't have to write it out like this. You can go straight to your answer. But sometimes it is good to write it out nice and slowly, like over here and over here. Because if you make a silly mistake, then at least you can see where you've made your silly mistake. And the teacher can see where you made it, and they can give you some method marks. But if you just write the answer down, and you don't show where your method was, and your teacher can't see where the silly mistake was, they might think you don't know what you're doing at all, and then not be able to give you any marks. So best to show your work. So this squared times by 2 is going to be x to the power of 4 plus 2 times 4 is 8 x squared plus 4 squared is 16. And there you go. That's our rule for perfect squares. Right, now let's look at the sum and difference of two numbers. Sum and difference, okay? So again, this has got a trick, but I'm going to show you how we get to the trick. So we're going to use a distributive law, and then you'll see the trick, okay? So if we use a distributive law, we go x times x is x squared. x times minus 4 becomes minus 4x. 4 times x becomes plus 4x. And 4 times minus 4 becomes minus 16 which becomes x squared. These cancel because minus 4x plus 4x is 0 and you're left with minus 16. So the sum and difference of two numbers or two brackets basically gives us a perfect square with a negative, basically gets us back to a perfect square. Okay, so now let's apply our rule. So we've got x plus 4y, x minus 4y. So you do you agree that becomes x squared plus times a minus is a minus and then 4 times 4 is 16 y squared. Okay, nice and easy. Let's do this one. x times x is x squared plus times a minus is a minus. 4 times 4 is 16 over x times x is x squared. And then finally x squared times x squared. Now it doesn't matter, what you should be noticing is it doesn't matter what these things are on either side. As long as they're the same and there's a plus and a minus in the different brackets, then you're fine. So x squared times x squared is x to the 4 minus 4 times 4 is 16. And there you go. That's how you do sum and difference of two numbers.